I know what you're thinking. How did she manage to land in this situation again that we gotta do another book haul video? I got the answer for you. Lack of self-control. But let's do a book haul. <laughs> Hello friends, I'm Rosa, welcome to the channel. So today we are doing another book haul. I don't, I don't want to talk about it. Well, I do want to talk about the books, but I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about how I'm waiting for a call from my bank every day or that my wallet is continuously screaming at me. I don't want to talk about it. I only want to talk about our books. So let's do that. As per usual, I will be leaving little chapters on the timeline, so if you prefer to listen to me talk about adult books instead of young adult, which is the category that we're starting out with today, you can skip ahead. And I'll also be leaving links to all the books to both Book Depository, but also US Amazon in the description box as well. If you're curious, you want to check them out, so on and so on. But we have so many books to talk about today, so I'm just gonna get started before we drag this out for like five minutes and suddenly I have like to hurry, right? Okay, let's go. So starting out with young adult fantasy, I have Wild is the Witch by Rachel Griffin. Rachel Griffin wrote, I don't have it on me right now. Oh, it's right here and you can't see it, but The Nature of Witches, which came out last year. That was their debut and it was beautiful. So when I found out that they were doing a second book still involving witches, I was like, yes, I'm on it. Thank you. I will take it. <laughs> Anything Rachel Griffin from now on writes involving witches, I will be there first hand or first row, ready for it. So here we are. Before we talk about the synopsis, I want to show you guys how beautiful this book is naked. <laughs> like what is this madness? Look at this. Gorgeous. She's beautiful. Stunning. But it was the same with The Nature of Witches. I just like the extra touch that they give them. Not to mention the cover itself. This color combination, I am obsessed. Forgot what the book is about though. I know what it's about. I just forgot. So give me a moment. <laughs> I'm caught up now. Okay, so we have ourselves Iris Grey, who is a witch. She has gone through something that she feels very guilty over but in this world we have like a witch's council so witches aren't necessarily like super rare beings in this world. They're I wouldn't say common either but anyway at least if it's anything like the nature of witches which I think they might be somewhat similar I'm not really sure we'll figure it out once I've read it but we have a witch's council that have deemed her innocent however Iris does not care she feels incredibly guilty over this thing that happened and kind of just wants to forget the fact that she's a witch or at least she doesn't want anyone to know that she has powers so she basically spends her nights writing curses that she has no intention of actually bringing out into the world she's just frustrated she needs you know like how some people journal Iris writes curses Yes. And in her daytime, she works at a wildlife refuge where there's a guy who's called Pike who hates witches. He hates them so much. Something happens between the two and Iris suddenly <laughs> finds herself casting a curse on Pike. However, as she's about to dispel this curse, an owl scoops down and steals it from her and flies off. Unfortunately, this owl is like an amplifier. So suddenly Iris is in trouble because if this owl does something with the curse, it won't just affect Pike anymore. It'll affect everyone. So Pike and Iris have to work together to find the curse or get the curse off of this owl. Are you confused? I hope not. Anyway, <laughs> I have expectations for this book. I am super excited. It's gonna be a good time. I hate us to lovers or like slightly enemies to lovers. Which story with wildlife? Yes, thank you. Also with a beautiful cover. That I'm so sorry I'm covering up with my face. How dare I? Next up we have The Drowned Woods by Emily Lloyd Jones. This is the Illumicrate version that came in the July box. She has stenciled edges that look like this. I hope you can see it. It looks like the camera is focusing on my face, but she also has beautiful foiling on the naked cover. Although I will say this is definitely not my favorite embossing that I've seen because there's so much going on. It's kind of hard to tell what is what, but there's a woman, there's a woman's face right there and there's a pair of fish. So I hope that helped. The inside of the dust jacket also has gorgeous art which is very, I was almost about to say artistic, but isn't art artistic by default? Yeah. It looks like this though. She's gorgeous. Beautiful colors. So this book takes place in Wales and we follow Mare, who is the world's last 
water diviner. I think that's the term that we're using. Her ability is basically that she can manipulate water, which is a, an ability of power that is very sought after and obviously incredibly uh, useful, as in people would actually kill to get their hands on our girl. She used to be in the service of the prince, who's a very cruel cruel kind of guy. And for the prince, she's actually killed thousands of people in the past, but has managed to run away from the prince. And at this point, she's basically hiding. She just wants a quiet life. She doesn't want any trouble. She just wants to be left on her own. However, the king's spy master finds her and makes a proposition because he too has also been abused by the prince and basically wants Mare's help to bring him down. I do believe there's a bit of a heist to this book which I'm looking forward to so at some point there'll be a little bit of a crew and I'm just excited to get to that point. There's also a corgi in this book who may or may not be a spy. That's all I need to know because like I love corgis so <laughs> does it talk? Is that a thing? I'm very curious. Okay, so me and my loose hair had a good run, but it's too warm and I need to put it away, so give me a moment. <laughs> okay, so I really miss the days where it was fine to just have my hair down, but it's like too warm in my office. My hair is too thick. It gets too warm. So anyway, this is the situation now. Next up, we have a fairy loot edition, which is The Darkening by Sonia Mara. She's beautiful, stunning. We have uh, stenciled edges that look like this kind of right, reminds me of feathers, which I'm pretty sure it's also supposed to be. And we got some gorgeous, kind of simple-ish foiling on the naked cover. And my favorite part is the end papers that look like this. But also there's a second pair of end papers. Or do they come in pairs? I don't, whatever. And they look like, or it looks like this in the back. It's a beautiful edition, stunning art, absolutely love it. So in this book we follow a prince whose name is Dalcha and also a girl whose name is Vesper Vale and she is the daughter of a failed revolutionary. Prince Dalcha is basically, he's, he's tasked with protecting his city that is currently surrounded by a very deadly storm. There's something super confusing about the synopsis and I'll try to explain what it is, but Vesper is on the run from the Queen's soldiers that are led by Prince Dalja because her mother was sentenced to death. I'm assuming for the uh, failed revolution, but uh, she was sentenced to death so she had to walk into the deadly storm and die, seemingly. So Vesper's father and Vesper herself have been on the run since this happened from the Queen's soldiers. Unfortunately, they catch up to them and Vesper will do anything to save her father from meeting the same fate as her mother did. So she basically takes her father's experimental magic book and also infiltrates the uh, the queen's elite soldiers and also tries to get close with Prince Dalcha. But during the execution of her plans, she actually finds out that there's more to her mother's death than she thought at first and also starts to think maybe she can trust this Prince Dalcha or maybe she can't. I don't know. What I find confusing about the synopsis is that if the Queen's soldiers catch up to them, how come she's not brought in? Obviously her father is, but how come she is? And <laughs> how does she still get to infiltrate them? There must be something that happens in this book that couldn't be included in the synopsis, but that was just a part of the synopsis where I went like, what? That doesn't make sense to me. What happened? <laughs> it's like there's a window right there. That's just unexplained, but I guess we'll figure it out once I uh, get to reading this book. Next up, I actually have two of the same book, but in two different versions, and it's Violet Made of Thorns. This is the Fairy Loot Edition, which came in their August box, I think. It has a beautiful exclusive cover. The original one is a little bit more on the purple side, but they've changed it so that it kind of has this like sunset vibe to it. It also has ombre sprayed edges that fits with the colors, but also art directly onto, printed directly onto the uh, naked cover. And it also has end papers that look like this. The back ones look like this. I really love these end papers because it looks like she's standing on a balcony, right? And he's standing down on the ground looking up at her, which is just... I don't know, that's cool. It's a nice touch. My other edition is from Owlcrate and it has a completely redesigned cover. It also has 
the most cutest end papers that are foily like this. I've not opened the book exactly, so I hope you can see it, but like super foily. It also has foil on the naked cover and also on the back. And I believe it also has inside dust jacket art. Yes, it does. That looks like this. So it's quite cute. So this book is about, or these books, I don't know. It's the same story. Anyway, different looks. So this book is about Violet who is a bit of an oracle. She works at the royal court, but whenever she prophesies something, she's not necessarily always telling the truth, so she's a very deceitful oracle. At this court is the prince as well, whose name is Cyrus. And Cyrus has threatened Violet with stripping her of her titles once he gets crowned at the end of the summer. But then Violet is tasked with foreseeing or prophesizing, if that's the right word to use, <laughs> if that's even a word, Prince Cyrus's love story. But the king has told her that she has to lie about it. Because of this though, Violet happens to awaken a dreaded curse, which could basically result in the kingdom's damnation or salvation, depending on who Cyrus chooses as his future bride. And unfortunately for Violet, she also has to make a choice because even though she says she doesn't like Cyrus, even though she says he's oh so not charming. She actually kind of likes him. But at the same time, this whole situation is also for her an opportunity to basically take her destiny into her own hands. And so that is where we are at with this book. I'm reading this this month and I'm super excited to be reading it. Royal Court Intrigue and Liars. So that sounds like fun. So also a little bit of an enemies to lovers situation. I love the color scheme that we got going on right now. It's all like blue and purple. Like there's definitely a theme. There's most definitely a theme going on. Yeah, but I like it. So I got three more young adult books to talk about before we move on to some adult fantasy. These two are... <laughs> I can't summarize them, but I don't think I have to necessarily, but I decided to get the hardcover copies of The Dark Artifices. So last month I got Lady Midnight and now I have Lord of Shadows and also Queen of Air and Darkness. So I can finally read them and annotate them and everything that I want to. I'd rather do that in hardcovers than paperbacks. So I got this one used, but unfortunately could not find this one used. So she's completely new, but I'm actually happy that I got a new one because it turns out that it has this on the inside of the dust jacket which really surprised me but it's super cool. I however, like I said, can't really summarize these books as they are a second and a third one in a trilogy but they're Shadowhunter books by Cassandra Clare. If you don't know what Shadowhunters are, they are basically humans with partially angel blood that are on the earth to save us mundanes or to protect us mundanes from other creatures of the night, if you will. Like vampires, but also fae and other creatures. Yes. <laughs> Also demons, that's a thing in the Shadowhunters as well, um, that are here to hurt us and also to put them in their place if they overstep or break rules and stuff. So I have read The Mortal Instruments, which takes place in the Ceros, the 2000s in New York. And I've also read The Infernal Devices, which takes place in 1870s, I think it is, in London. And these ones take place in Los Angeles at the start of the 2010s, I believe. The Shadowhunters have different institutes around the world, so they've been taking place at the different institutes. Super excited to get acquainted with the Los Angeles Shadow Hunters, but I've not done it yet because I'm a little bit nervous about it, <laughs> which I admitted in my last video. It's a whole thing. Yeah, it's a whole thing. Cassandra Clare likes to break hearts and um, my heart is not ready to get broken yet. Yes. The last young adult book that I have to show is The Raven Boys by Mackie's... Mackie? Mackie Steve Fader. I don't know why I called her Mackie. Oops. <laughs> this is uh, The Raven Boys. This is the first one in a quartet, and I got this one used. It's clearly old. It's actually funny. There's there's a receipt in it, which I kind of found very interesting. So someone from Germany bought this from a bookstore in the US in 2013, which is super cool. And now I have it. And it has a signed book plate in it, and also a drawing of a bird, which I'm guessing is a raven, but I don't know why it's there though. I have no idea. But um, that's a thing. So 
I don't know. I just thought it was super cool because I opened it and suddenly a receipt fell out. I was like, what in the world? I'm keeping it in the book just because I think it's funny. So, so I'm going to keep this super short because I honestly don't want to know too much about the Raven Boys before I go into it, except that we follow a girl who has the clairvoyant mom who can basically see people that are soon to be dead. And there's also three boys that are kind of different from each other. They both have their like little thing. The three boys go to a different school than Blue. I think they go to a boys school and Blue has kind of also decided at some point to stay away from boys that go to the school. The boys that go to the school are called the Raven Boys by the way, hence the title. But due to circumstances and situations, she finds herself involved with three boys. I don't know if maybe involved is the right word. <laughs> Makes it sound like something that I'm not sure it's supposed to be, but I'm gonna go with it anyway. And um, that's all I wanna know. So there's supposedly also a love story in there, but I don't wanna know too much before going into it. We're continuing with the blue theme. I just find it funny. Why are all my books blue? How is that a thing today? Blue and purple. Anyway, so those were my young adult books for this time, or for this video at least. If you've read any of them, let me know. But we're moving on to the adult books that I have purchased over the last, since the last book haul. <laughs> so the first book among my adult fantasy, but also one sci-fi, is The Witch's Heart by Genevieve Gordichej. Not really sure how to pronounce either their first or the last name. I apologize. I'm doing my best here, but anyway. I don't really fully know what this book is about other than it's Norse mythology or retelling of a Norse mythology story. It is a story of Loki's wife, whose name I actually can't pronounce, <laughs> which is kind of embarrassing to um, admit, but here we are anyway. <laughs> but she is the witch who gave birth to, uh, what do you call it in English? Fen Fenrir? Fenrir. The fen the the wolf. I don't we could call he, him a Fenrir Sulman. So I don't know what you call him in English, but you know the big the big wolf. The the bad wolf. Yes. If you know anything about Norse mythology, you know the wolf. <laughs> I believe there's also a snake, but I forgot what the last one of these monsters is, but she's the one that gave birth to them. Their father is Loki, she's the mother. And that's all I know about this witch, because there's not really much told about her as far as I've been taught in school at least. So I thought it would be super, cause I'm Norse, <laughs> just in case you did not know. I'm from Denmark, so I thought it would be super cool to find something that wasn't only Greek mythology because there's so much of it. So I went into, or I started looking into some Norse mythology retellings. I also really want Norse mythology by Neil Gaiman, but we're starting out with this one. So once I get on a mythology kick again, She'll be the first one I read, and I'm super excited for it. So I um, also love the cover. It's very, like I see the inspiration, you know? Oh, we actually have the wolf and the snake. I didn't even notice. The wolf and the snake are on the cover. See, the wolf is over here and the snake is right there. And then there's who I don't know who is. But anyway, that's the first one. Next up, we actually have a Greek mythology retelling, and that is Neon Gods by Katie Robert. So I bought this for a buddy read with a friend of mine. We still haven't discussed it. I'm not even sure she's finished reading it. I have though, <laughs> but this is a Persephone and Hades, or Hades and Persephone retelling, but it's like very smutty, almost, I almost wanna say borderline erotica. It's a lot of fun though, so. I, yeah, I had a good time with this one, but I will be talking about it in a wrap-up, possibly a wrap-up that I'm recording today, actually. But a Greek mythology retelling, if you're not aware of the story of Hades and Persephone, it's been a long time since I've heard the original story, but Persephone was set to marry Zeus, but fled to the underworld where Hades is, and the two started a love relationship at least as far as I can recall so it's based around that but also takes place in a more modern city where the gods are not necessarily like Hades is called Hades Zeus is called Zeus but they're basically like people that have been put into the role of the different gods so they have like different roles in the system to play out and stuff it's a little bit hard to explain it was fun though a little bit of a more modern take on a Hades and Persephone retelling, so. And then I have a book that I am not afraid to admit that I don't know a thing about. <laughs> it was a very impulsive purchase because it was on sale on Book Depository and I just kind of 
like went for it because it was very cheap for a hardcover. It's called The Awakening by Nora Roberts. I know that Nora Roberts is like fantasy romance, a fantasy romance author, but that's really all I know. So I can't tell you about this one as of right now, but I also don't have a, like, I don't feel like I need to know the synopsis right now. I'm kind of questioning why I included it in this, uh, in this book haul. I'm gonna read the back. Mist, shimmering silver fingers, rose over the pale green water of the lake. They twined and twisted toward a sky quietly gray, while in the east over the hills a pink blush waited like a held breath to waken. So it's the awakening of something. <laughs> All right, I saw there was dragons in it, seemingly, and I was like, yeah, but there may not be dragons in it. I guess we'll find out once I read it at some point. It'll be very exciting. And then I totally caved because I'd actually planned to read these on Kindle Unlimited, but I've lost my Kindle Unlimited subscription. It's a whole thing. I don't want to get into it. So I decided to buy them as paperbacks instead, but only the first two so far, and it's the Plated Prisoner series, but one and two, so Guild and Glint by Revan Kennedy. Raven. Kennedy. So this is a retelling of the story of King Midas, which off the top of my head, I cannot tell you what it's about. But in these books, at least, we follow a girl, a woman who has been taken prisoner by King Midas, and she's basically covered in gold, or she's been turned into gold. Something like that. King Midas is the only one she sees on a daily basis. He's the only one giving her food. He's the only one who's, uh, who she's talking to. So there's a bit of a Stockholm Syndrome situation going on here because she does actually love King Midas. However, a war breaks out in this world that the books take place in and as a part of a bargain she's basically traded off so she feels betrayed by King Midas. She has to go to this other place that she's totally unaware of. She doesn't know anybody. She's just been in this tower for as long as she's been imprisoned and um that's what this is about. So at least that's what I've been given as for the story. I've heard many good things about not so much the first one but the second third and the fourth the fifth one is is it the fifth one that's coming out next and that's the last one yeah it has to be so as far as i know you just have to get through the first one and then it gets really good people have kind of been comparing the fantasy romance aspect of it to echo tar which i'm really excited about because i love echo tar so i basically decided to join the hype wave and um, now I got at least the first two. And then we have the last one of my adult books. This is the only sci-fi that I have this time around. And it's Golden Sun by Pierce Brown. So this is the sequel to Red Rising. This I decided to buy. I haven't read Red Rising yet, but I really want to. I might pick it up this month. I'm not really sure, but I decided to get the sequel because I basically got, I got a discount code to Book Depository and <laughs> I was like, okay, you gotta buy the priciest hardcover that you really, really want so you can actually take advantage of this discount count code. I think I got like 20% off or something. So the priciest hardcover that I could find on my wish list was Golden Sun. And um, now he's in my possession. Here we go. But <laughs> I've not read Red Rising yet. So you might argue that that's a bit of a weird decision. Listen, when it comes to buying books, I don't use my head. I just do. That's my, that's my method. That's my go-to method when book shopping. Just pick the books. Don't think about it. Just go. Go with your gut. And I've also decided actually before I go into Red Rising that I don't want to know anything about it. Not really. So I can't even summarize that for you. But um, it'll be a nice surprise once I finally get to it. And at least I'll have the sequel ready, which I kind of had a feeling that I needed. So... I think I want to get the third one as well before I get started reading Red Rising, maybe. Or at least like order it. We'll see. Undecided. But those were my adult fantasy and sci-fi. So next up we have some mystery books. I only got three. Two of them are from the same series, which is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. I really love the first book. It's kind of one of my first mystery reads, but I really enjoyed it. So I felt like getting my hands on the second and the third one before actually getting started with the second one. It took so long to find this as a hardcover for some reason, but I finally managed and now I got both of them and I can actually get started, which I probably will in October, because it's October. Mystery. Perfect month. But in the first one, at least, we follow... Oh gosh, what is her name? I feel like I just read a spoiler. 
<laughs> I just wanted to see her name. Hold on. Stevie. Okay, Stevie. I'm gonna ignore everything that I just read in the synopsis for the third one. But her name is Stevie. Stevie is a bit of a, I don't want to call her special, but like every child, teenager that goes to this academy that Stevie has gotten into has this has like a, a very deep interest for something. So Stevie's interest is true crime. Like she is all about true crime. She just loves true crime. And because of that, as a result of that, she's also very good at solving mysteries. Some of the other kids, like one of them builds robots. There's one that makes YouTube videos. <laughs> There's another one that writes books. So they all have like their own thing, if you will. And they're really good at it too. They have to be to be accepted into the Ellingham Academy. But the thing is about Ellingham is that while it's built for these special. I don't want to call them special, but like I don't have another word for it. While it's built, set up for these kids that have like a deep interest for something, it also has a bit of a mystery behind it because the founder of Ellingham, Ellingham himself, died somehow and so did his wife and his daughter is missing. And this happened like years and years ago. But when Stevie arrives at Ellingham Academy, stuff starts to happen and Stevie kind of finds herself drawn to this mystery of what happened to Alice Ellingham all those years ago, like where did she go? So she sort of takes it upon herself to try and solve this mystery. Also, it was done by someone who calls himself Truly Devious, which I should probably have mentioned. <laughs> That's why the book is called Truly Devious, but um, hopefully I'll get some answers in the second and the third one. A lot of stuff has happened in the first one, I'm really trying to like really myself back to not spoil anything so I'm gonna call it there just so that I don't and we're gonna talk about the third mystery book that I have which is Finley Donovan is killing it this is by El Co Cosimano Cosimano maybe but this is an adult contemporary it's supposed to be hilarious which is why I got it <laughs> so so in this book we follow Finley Donovan who is a true crime novelist she writes murder mysteries, crime novels, you know, that thing. And she's also a single mom. Everything is just kind of, she has stress in her life. It's stressful, yeah. Nothing is going to plan ever, but she has a meeting with her agent where she has to describe the plot of her next crime novel and while she's there, two women overhear her explaining the plot to her agent but somehow manage to misinterpret the situation and think that she is a hit woman. So she is, after this meeting with her agent, she is approached by one of these women who wants to hire her to kill her husband. <laughs> And Finlay Donovan, who's maybe not having the best time, is a bit stressed out, maybe things aren't going too well with her novels, suddenly gets a lot of cash to take care of this husband problem and decides to just go with it. <laughs> so I think this is going to be a hilarious read. I'm looking forward to getting into it. I don't know when, but it's going to be a fun time, I think. So, um, oh yeah. Those were my only three mystery books. Mystery is not my most beloved. I don't really do a lot of mystery, so three books in one haul is actually, I would say, pretty um, impressive. I'm looking forward to reading every single one of these, so it'll be a good time. Anywho, next up we have a little bit of historical fiction romance. We have eight books, and it's one set that I purchased a while ago and then received here last month I think so they deserve a spot in this video but it's a lot and I can't really tell you the plot but I don't think I have to either. <laughs> so Illumicrate did a an announcement week some uh, a month ago, a month and a half ago, I don't know, two months ago and one of their sets that they announced was the Bridgerton, the whole Bridgerton and they sold out so quickly like they were gone so quickly. I managed to get a set that I'm super excited about. Like I look at the set several times, for, hold on. I turn around in my chair and look at the set several times a day because it's so cute. It should be the whole set in the right order. I hope you can see it, but it basically shapes or the spines are basically the Bridgerton house. We have all the books, all the eight books, starting out with The Duke and I. These are by Julia Quinn. And I believe that the first one is also signed, which you can see right here. So they all have like 
foiling on the, uh, they're all redesigned, have foiling on the covers. They're B format, which means that they're very small. If you want to compare them to Finley Donovan. It's a paperback, they're just very small or compared to a small hardback. So you can see like they're just a little bit smaller. In my eyes, that just makes them cuter. And they all have their little theme with the foiling as well on the naked covers. So this one has a feather. The sequel, which is uh, The Big Count Who Loved Me, has a bee on it. And they're super cute, but I cannot tell you about the plot. I've not actually read the first one. I really want to. It just has to fit in with my plans, but have not done it yet. I have watched the first season on Netflix and I loved it. Have not gotten to the second season yet. I kind of want to sit down and just watch it, which I suck at. Um, <laughs> so I'm thinking I might wait until I've read the sequel now as well. So we'll get to it, but I'm really excited to, uh, to have this this, this set on my shelves. I love the braid edges too. So cute. But yeah, wanted to show them off obviously in a book haul because they are completely new. Oh, those are nice colors. Such nice, nice colors. I think this one might be one of my favorites with the foil. It's just stunning. Like it's so, so cute. And then lastly, we have four. Wow, these match so well in, co in the color scheme. <laughs> we have four adult contemporary romances. The first one is Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. This is a companion novel to It Happened One Summer, which I really enjoyed when I read it. So we follow Piper's sister, whose name is Hannah, I think. Yeah, Hannah, and also Brendan's friend, whose name is Fox. Fox is a bit of a ladies' man. Hannah is totally, totally not interested in him, though. They're really good friends. Fox might be feeling like you want to be a little bit more than friends, but like in a not ladies man kind of way, in a very I think I like you kind of way. So that's what this is about. And I'm sure the synopsis also has a little bit more information on that, but I've chosen not to read it because I already am acquainted with the characters and I like them. So I think it'll be a really good read for me at some point. I am a sucker for it romance books after all, aren't I? Yeah, we'll have a good time eventually. I'm looking forward to it. Next up we have one that I initially didn't have any interest in reading and then it was on sale so I decided to basically say F it <laughs> and decided to get Twisted Love by Anna Huang. But I don't actually know much about the story, the plot, other than we have a dude who is a bit tormented, if you will, and he's a very not nice person but we also have a girl who I don't know much about but he apparently likes her and I th yeah <laughs> did I sell it was that enough I don't know <laughs> it's a very popular book they were re-released as well recently with these covers that I like a lot more than the original covers I'll admit part of the reason I didn't want to read them to start out with was because of the original covers don't know what it is I just don't enjoy those covers so I'm very happy that we have a little bit more of a simplistic look to it now am I the only one who's immediately turned off like dudes on covers like actual dudes or even women I just don't like it like actual people on my book covers at least my contemporary romance books I just I'm not good with it so, and then the last two, I don't really fully know what they're about either. I know that I've read the synopsis for them, but I've kind of forgotten them. But I read the synopsis before buying them and I was like, yes, I can get on board with this. This sounds good. But now that I have them, I've forgotten what they're about. What is that? Why? I know that I've heard lovely things about both of them though. So I am very excited to have them in my collection. The first one being Every Summer After, and this is by Carly Fortune. There's a blurb from Emily Henry, which as well is selling it for me, but the back says six summers to fall in love, one moment to fall apart, a weekend to get it right. So I'm kind of wondering if this is maybe like a second chance sort of romance, but I've heard beautiful things about it. Super excited to be reading it at some point. Although it's giving me summer vibes, which kind of sucks. <laughs> And then the other one is Archer's Voice. This is by Nia Sheridan. It also has an exclusive extended epilogue. I did not know that, but I believe this is a small town romance. Kind of getting the vibe from that. That is definitely a small town romance. <laughs> kind of getting the vibe from that one too, a little bit. And I also believe that the guy in this one doesn't really talk, which is why it's called Archer's Voice. His name is Archer. So that's what I remember though. And I'm okay with that because I don't need to know the synopsis before going into books. I think I've just kind of read them and been like, yes, and then bought them. And then because I know that I love them or like they sound like good to me on paper, I've just kind of been like, let's make room for something else. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but 
those are my adult contemporary romance books that I have for this round. If you've read any of the books that I've talked about today, definitely let me know. Either if you liked them or if you didn't, I would love to hear you guys out. Again, you can find links to all the books in the description box down below if you want to check any of them out. And also if you want to support the channel, I do have a Patreon where we do buddy reads every month and I do an exclusive spoiler -y vlog covering the primary pick of the book club. So if you want to check that out, there's a link to it in the pinned comment. But that's all I got for you guys today. So I hope you all enjoyed this very, very long haul. The next one will probably be just as long. I'm not gonna lie. We have issues in this household and I'm actually okay with it. Yeah. But if you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, like I said, there'll be another haul sometime soon, probably. <laughs> but I also do reading vlogs, 24 hour readathons, TBR videos, wrap ups, you know, all the booktube stuff. So if any of that interests you, definitely consider hitting the subscribe button. And that is all I got for you guys today. So I hope you all enjoyed this video and I will see you all in the next one. Bye bye. Oh, you know, you're beautiful.